How many of you are being blessed and changed by Koinonia in all sincerity? The day we stop ministering the word to you, God has a right to seize ministry from us. Because from that time, we become showmen and actors on stage. Hallelujah. Let me show you something. Ephesians chapter 2. I hope that one day when you become a pastor, look at me. When you become a pastor in future and you make slavery out of your members, we will call you and we'll ask you where you learned it from. Hallelujah. The reason why we are careful with our lives many times is so that we do not sow the seed of bondage and corruption in the hearts of many people. And so we allow death to walk in us so that life will walk in you. Hallelujah. Paul said, follow me as I follow after Christ. Run away from all this wrong concept of ministry and concept of glory where you dominate your fellow man in a bit to show you are great. The greatest in the kingdom is a servant. Humility is a revelation. It's not an act. There is a revelation that keeps you in that state. Hallelujah. Away with that ambition of lording it over people. And have, I fear people that serve me. I've said this thing for years. Till today I'm not able to call people sons and daughters. Because I know how of much of a baby I am in the presence of God. And so what is the extent of grace that will make me call someone a son or a daughter? And I run away from these kinds of things. Because I know that anybody that assumes a position of honor will be judged even more. Make sure your priorities are defined about life about leadership about ministry kill away the wrong mindsets that we have received where you lord it over people that's not the way of the spirit when the spirit of god finds expression in the life of a man if all you have to show for your yieldedness is that you can blow and people fall down you are still a baby in the spirit hallelujah we must be built and be matured. Men of character, men of grace, men of humility. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right, let me have, um, please, as I make these calls, if you belong to this category, just run out quickly. I will embarrass you. Let me have someone that knows God is calling him in the place of ministry, just one person. One God is calling you in the place of music. Come out quickly as I'm calling. Just if you are bold and you are confident, if you are thinking about it, just remain there. One person, you are what? Music. Do you sing? But in your other shirt, you should leave only one. Dress properly. Hallelujah. What of you? Music. Hold on. I just need come. I'm not praying. We are doing something. How okay? Um music all of you okay don't worry just just go back to your seat appreciate them please i just need one person music okay let's have two of you someone in fashion and design fashion and design quickly who will make sure it's what you are doing not dreaming about yet at least that you have a seed on ground make sure when you come out here you dress properly don't dress like a hooligan dress like a leader right don't come out with with comb in your pocket and you're laughing no you, are, you dress like you know where you are going don't look like a foolish person it's touts that look like that hallelujah you comb your hair you look smart you look like where you are going don't dress like a thief that's why they keep stopping you on the road hallelujah all right let's have someone in education education 
someone who is education anybody you know god is calling in the area of education please appreciate them as they come someone in family life you know you have a passion family life who is that education family life who is represent okay i will too appreciate her someone in politics and governance you know that there is grace for you in that area make sure you know what you are standing for if you are not sure please go back to your seat hallelujah please come up and face the congregation all of you uh someone in arts and entertainment fashion you're a beauty you are a beauty uh, what do we call it makeup artist beautician where are you oh she looks it no problem just come up you're a pastor why are you laughing you people always think come on pastor beautiful one more person come on celebrate her i like people who are bold and confident hallelujah all right so just group yourself fashion beauty this side next music next your what decoration education two of you beautiful please stand family life politics and governance hallelujah all of you are 10 coin on here right hallelujah okay um sweetheart come Now, you are a pastor walking in grace. You've attended our miracle services, right? And you've seen the grace of God. And as a Christian who has been built, you have the opportunity to talk in a bereavement. Now, you walk in miracles. You walk in signs and wonders. But a family has lost their loved one. And they just push you as you are now. All right with the knowledge of what we have been training the building and everything how would you approach how would you communicate the light of christ and comfort the family make your mistakes don't be afraid this is a training ground nobody i assure you listen nobody will look at you and speak whatever you can i'm comforting you here i'm standing by your side okay all right go ahead praise the lord praise the living god are there living souls here Praise, praise, praise the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, to me, I'll go to such family because, you know, life without Jesus, if that family are not from, are not maybe, let me say, they don't know much about Christ. Because you cannot just go into a family and just start, you understand. If they don't know about Christ, you first preach Christ to them. Praise the Lord. And also, you cannot do it by your own power. You need God. Praise the living God. Before you go and meet any family, you need to go on your knees. Not only on your knees, you need to go to God. God, I want to go to that family. What do you want me to say? How do you want me to comfort them? Praise the living God. Hallelujah. And with the help of God, you see that God will give you words to say. Praise God. God bless you. Come on, please appreciate her. Yes, we are proud of you. You are learning very well. Hallelujah. That's the life of a minister. You never do things without the leadership of the Holy Spirit. That's all I was looking for. This is what we are teaching you. Are you following me now? How many of you like Koinonia 101? No carryover. No carryover whatsoever. Hallelujah. So that you'll be established. When you step out, you should know that you have been trained. When you graduate from AB, you behave like an Abu site. And you know you are smart. You cannot graduate from ABU and behave as if you did not go to school. Hallelujah. So when you are going to a bereaved family, you don't just go arrogantly and go and meet them and say, Do you know that we attend miracle service and we are all these kind of things? You are behaving like a child here. If you don't know what to say, what do you do? keep quiet there is wisdom in silence i told you to read the book of proverbs the moment you are in the midst of people especially elderly people and you don't know what to say shut your mouth that's what elihu did until wisdom came unto him 
Hallelujah. Politics and governance. Come, sir. We live in a very corrupt country. Hallelujah. Where every Tom, Dick, and Harry has access to a part of the national treasury. Anybody can loot. Hallelujah. And now you become the chairman of a local government. There's subvention, there's allocation, eh? there's, there's everything for you. And now we have taught you to represent Christ. Assuming you have to address your leaders, Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, free thinkers, wicked people, demons, all kinds of people. And now you are supposed to communicate the life of Christ. You have been receiving the teachings here. Listen. If you cannot translate the word that you are receiving here into a practical reality, we have been wasting our time. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sir. Feel free. Express yourself. Praise God. Two minutes. In a country like Nigeria where there is high level of incubation of um, corruption, I, as one, pardon the whole um, pattern of um, bureaucracy and so on and so forth, but there's a need for strategic planning. We saw that in the life of Jesus Christ where he was able to coordinate his disciples in assigning um, respective assignments to them um, all around, you know. And in the same regard, you being able to contend with um, society is another aspect which you need to put into consideration, which Jesus Christ continually was um, faced with um, challenges from the Sadducees and the Pharisees. But consistently, the application of wisdom, which of course didn't just come um, naturally, but he prayed, and actually wisdom was then granted unto him. He was commissioned into his assignment, and so the same will I do. Amen. Okay, so you have not told us what you are going to tell them. So, assuming you are addressing a group of people, what give us one solution that can help to bring good governance in this country we are tired of nonsense speak to us good governance is a active role in key participation everybody has um based on the from a kingdom perspective not social studies all right from a kingdom perspective participation one major aspect which we need to do is actually not looking at the importance of any office but actually operating with a mindset of humility you just said not quite long ago humility is a revelation it is not um an understanding amen hallelujah and so as a christian when you go into public office it's not for you the waiting day for us. you have will chop they have they have chopped their own no as a christian you must go with the attitude of servanthood your blessing is tied to the operation of the economy of the kingdom, not in looting from the treasury. Hallelujah. And you face a lot of challenges because there are people above you. But you must refuse to compromise. Don't go and steal money and come and lie to us in the church. And carry small and say, Joshua, Selman, this is for you to go on air. We will drive you away with it. That's why we are believing the word of God for ourselves. Hallelujah. So when we vote you, sir, Make sure you represent Christ. Now I can talk to you. But when you get there, when you forget one night, you will dream of Koinonia. And you will dream of this warning. God will threaten you and say, Mr. Man, he will do to you what he did to Adeboe. The day you mess up, I will erase you from the ground. We are proud of you. Go and represent the kingdom. Family life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Marriage right now is a union between two things. Anything, a man and a whale, a fish and, 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 and anything, a man and a baby. I've said it again. If you are considering marriage, it is paramount that the partner you are thinking about must be of the opposite sex. Hallelujah. It's amazing that the Senate in Nigeria can be debating gay marriage. A man and a man, a woman and a woman, we call it human rights. And that westernization and that nonsense is creeping through films. Is there anybody in media here? No, media. Media. Come on. We cannot move without the media. Who is there? We need one person from the media. Quickly. All right, family life, ma. 
now you are supposed to talk sense into family there's all kinds of things going on a man believes the wife is his slave the wife believes the man is whatever everybody comes with every how do you approach from a kingdom perspective what do you think is the solution to restoring discipline and godliness in america a child is 14 years old the mother says sit down here say, i'm gonna see you at the court and the child slaps his mother and we call it human rights isn't it and when you get a cane and whip the child we call it all kinds of names I don't plan to beat my children, but I plan to discipline them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, the Bible says that now we have a more sure word of prophecy. And we have the Bible to always go back to. Praise the Lord. And um, as Monroe said, that when a purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So in the family, everybody has his or her place, hallelujah. The father, the priest of the home, and then the mother and all that. And um, I know women, lately there have been um, women trying to, um, is it campaign for their place, for their right, hallelujah. But from the scripture, it's, it's um, obvious where the place of the woman is where the place of the man is the children and all that so um what i would do as a person of course seeking having sought for the leadership of the holy spirit is to um, bring to the consciousness of the people your place hallelujah as a child as a father as a mother hallelujah and then to trust the holy spirit to lead us hallelujah amen bless you beautiful how many of you are proud of the people this is just a random sampling it's a true proof of whether we are making progress or not hallelujah praise the lord media in five minutes a nation can become become drug addicts or, or because a celebrity went on air he was allowed to go on channel o or mtv right and you see all kinds of things and now we have on youtube ipad everything you can i mean you just need to go on youtube there's everything free pornography how to shoot guns how to kill people now god is sending you to the media you're an apostle to the media what do you think you can do or how do you plan to approach to bring the kingdom thank god for tv stations Christian TV stations. I think you should appreciate every ministry and every servant of God around the world that has a TV station. It's a breath of fresh air in this jungle of Babylon. Every channel you tune into, there are lies. The media, people tell lies. They are manipulated by government. If God gives you a television ministry, will you let me be on your TV ministry? Most definitely, sir. Uh, because you're my teacher. And the, the, main, the main reason why the every being was created is to give glory unto God. And every invention of man is an extension of the creation of God. So if the media was created by man, it means that the purpose of the media is to bring glory to God. And if it's not glorifying God, then the purpose of it has been defeated. So most definitely, if I get to own a television station, when i get to own a television station thank you sir it, it, it the bible would be the only law that is followed if it is out of the scriptures then it is not existing Hold on. i hope you know that right now on tv stations many tv stations you can't say jesus even god is becoming an issue you must say divine or just something or highest something in the highest whatever it is paper ufos whatever in the highest so how do you plan to come in bluntly? Do you plan to be very blunt about Jesus Christ? Extremely first of all, so that we'll know now whether we need to talk to you or... I am extremely blunt about Jesus Christ. 
and it will be replicated in every institution that is established that the lord used me to establish if we can't say the name of jesus christ on air then there is no business being in the business of media because jesus is the person that we're looking up to he's the being he's the most divine thing he's the creator of the universe he's the creator of the person that created media so most definitely if we cannot revive him on air then we have no business being on air so jesus would be the yardstick for every single thing for an advert to come on air we must first check it what is the implication of this advert on people there are theories that guide the media and these theories have one of the most popular theories in the media is the magic bullet theory that tells you that the media has the power to act exactly the way a bullet pointed at a human being will act that once it shoots you it takes effect immediately uh, that meaning that it has a way of reforming your mindset it has a way of transforming your mindset so we must look at every single content from that perspective is this television program how is it going to affect the people positively or negatively teaching our people how to prepare for war will it affect them positively or negatively showing a news that of something that's happened uh, in somewhere will it affect the people positively or negatively accepting some musical videos will it affect the people positively or negatively if it does not affect the people positively then it cannot go on air because if it does not affect the people positively then it means that it is definitely going to be destroying lives it's going to be, it's not only going to be destroying the immediate life that you're seeing but it's going to be destroying generations to come because it's what you have learned today that your seed will replicate so if it is not in the scripture it is not going to be on air yeah. hallelujah this is powerful hallelujah let me tell you something these guys will do what they are talking about they are not pretending it and i like his competence you see him now so you can talk to a group of unbelievers who are media people so we are not just training you to pray in tongues alone there is a place of creativity there is a place of digging deep you know where god is calling you to begin to build and prepare i never knew there was a theory that governs media but this is smart you are learning something right now hallelujah don't just be spiritually braced up you must be competent enough to invade the cosmos and bring intelligent presentation of the kingdom how many of you know ravi zacharias one intelligent apologetic he stood and preached before atheists and all kinds of people communicating the wisdom of the word hallelujah education we have all kinds of people students being victimized university of abuja they've asked the students to go and relocate you can imagine after spending years of work because of the corruption of the administration those in final year will have to go and start scouting for universities to start again this is the recent announcement allocations that are sent to the educational sector don't reach everybody chops his own nuc gets his own everybody gets his own there's project from educational tax fund to build universities build roads build all of these things and they are not being effective after five years they build and say 1999 project they do it in 2005 so how do you if you become the vice chancellor of amadu bello university in 2000 and what do what don't you like today that you think you can change quickly one minute praise the lord firstly the bible says he who lacks wisdom let him ask of the lord to give it liberally that's the first thing so if i'm the vice -chanc chancellor i would like all students to know that as as children of god we are ambassadors of heaven that's the first thing we are ambassadors of heaven which means that we are representing God. So everybody, as long as you ask for the course you want to read in your field, God is sending you there to effect a change, definitely. And God is a God of, he, he, has, he plans his things right before time. So he has sent before you. So if you ask definitely of, if we ask definitely of God, he has sent us to effect a change. So if I was a VC and, um, of ABU or whichever school, the first thing I will do, the very first thing I will do, is to bring up programs, not only education line, because nowadays I found out that. 
Okay, for, exa for example, last week I was opportunity to be on a particular program. No, no, no. What I mean is, what program are you going to bring up? Okay, a particular program I'm going to bring up is an idea, idea, idea challenge program. Something that can boost up um, students' IQ. So that in the nearest future, they can actually stand on their own and do something independent on their, on their own with God. So that's what I'm going to do. Are you going to increase lecturer salary? <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. Education too. What do you have to say? 20 seconds. Amen. Well, mine will go to the parts of the students. Because seriously, I think what is eating deep into our educational sector these days is laziness on the part of the students. That is, we rely on examination my, pra my practice. I think that is, what, that is what pains me most in the part of become, education. If you become the, 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 what do they call, the rector of JAM. Well, as the, if, when I become the rector of JAM, I will definitely look for the right ways, but I think being director of JAM is really going too far. I'm looking at it in a, in a place whereby before the students come to write exams, who are they actually? Because whatever JAM have in place, it is actually what a student actually is that he goes to do. Because JAM have brought up so many innovations, but exam my practice is the more they bring up new innovations, the more people devise ways. So we have to look for a way that to, to make students know that they can do it on their own because what we have now is students who don't really believe in themselves. We believe that you see people come and pray, 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 and at the end of the day you go to the exam hall after reading that you still go, what was your prayer for in the first place? If you really pray and believe that God is going to answer your prayer, I don't believe we should still go into exam. So I'm looking at it in a personal way. As a student, look at it that you can do it with the help of God. If you can pray to God and read your books, you can do it on your own. Hallelujah. Powerful. So when, when you get into the educational sector, organize programs that encourage students. All right? Organize programs that encourage students on billboards of schools. Instead of writing Socrates, say, write, you can make it. You can believe it. Draw the students in every faculty. Draw students receiving their convocation certificate. Before they step into their lecture theaters, that's what they are seeing. They will become what they are seeing. Hallelujah. That's how to apply scripture. Music. Come. Music. We've had people deceive us in church we sponsored them they went on air they produced album we bought it marketed it for them only for them to go on air and then sign up with something we don't understand they started reducing jesus to god god to divine divine to you you to her her to queen queen to princess princess to us are you aware of the challenge that you have to face in the music industry what's your result praise god um, one thing is this Mu you don't do music because you see others excel in music you do music because it's a calling it's a gift and one thing we need to realize is that you can't give what you don't have for you to give life you need to have life for you to minister anointing you need to have anointing you need to be grinded in the word of god music is not what will come outside and just start shouting you can even you with a rough voice you can minister anointing to people your private time we should have quality time with god in our private in our privacy you need to give what you have not just come and make sure of your voice and your 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 vocal prowess to to minister life you need to have life and the word of god should be taken seriously god should be our inspiration Hallelujah. have you written any song 
name two Christian gospel artists in Nigeria that you know? Samsung. Frank Edward. God bless you. Appreciate him, please. Please go back. If you tell us you are called into ministry and we tell you name two gospel ministers and, and you are chewing your mouth, we will not castigate you but will tell you go and sit down. Right? Then you pass paper and say, I want to minister in Koinonia. We say, no. Go and sit down. Work on yourself first. Hallelujah. Stand out. Okay. Praise the Lord. Came to realize that in our today's world, there are many souls are dying. There is someone that God wants to use to pull children to the kingdom of God. I want to take the example of Michael Jackson, the king of pop. If Michael Jackson should be a child of God, the crowd, he has moved proud to the world. But if that person is, a, is safe and he has pulled this crowd, all of them will make it to heaven. So when he died and I saw the crowd that are coming to him for his burial, it was a challenge to me. I said, this one, if this for God now, what will happen? Could have been a great soul winner. Praise the Lord. Now, when I was told that, Sarah, you are called to sing. And I say, God, can I sing? I don't know how to sing, but I may have people sing for your glory. And I don't know anything about music, but I submit. And anytime I stand and I handle the mic, I see the power of God moving. And I say, Lord, connect me to the people that will train me so that when I come out, when you announce me, that voice, that the people that are waiting for me, that unsafe soul that are waiting for me, will come and bow down before it through my administration in Jesus name praise the Lord two music schools for you Steve Strings has his music school Ruben has his music school go and meet him you will talk with him he will train you he's very gifted in that area go and meet him now hallelujah fashion who is okay we'll soon round up there is there is the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing Hallelujah. Fashion. Ah! Right now in the world, every day, Versace, Gucci, um, Boss, everybody is bringing up everything. Huh? All kinds of perfumes, all kinds of things. Alright? And uh, we have everybody, all kinds. Right now, you see naked ladies on perfumes that are for men. I mean completely naked and you know all kinds of things so how do we by the way let me tell you something for music guys do you realize that when Michael Jackson died in three days the album that he was supposed to use for his tour sold 120 million dollars in three days after his death people went to buy it so music brings you to a position where you are an influence over people that's the right time to communicate Christ. Hallelujah. So fashion. We have fashion parade, tarabangs, all of the people. How do you plan to compete with those world-class people? They are very good. They are very competent. They are not small at all. All they are Brazilian with one, all, all of these things. How do you plan to come in with it? Hmm? They are Mary Kay. They are Gucci Rush. Hallelujah. As a good designer... You must have to go out, seek. Kingdom perspective. How do you plan to be invaded? Not how do you plan to do the job. Just how do you plan to let Jesus come? Okay, through that. You must have to be careful. There are some perfumes that you must have to be careful when you are putting it. You understand? You must have to be. Let him talk. What is your business? I asked you to come out. You didn't come out. You must have to be very careful because in every aspect of this life, you bring out fashions. There are some fashions that they are evil. You understand? So, spiritually, you must have to say no for that. that let, I'm just assuming this, this is a shirt. Isn't it? I wear this shirt today. You don't know how comes talking about that and you go out looking for it no, without knowing that this shirt is from maybe from evil uh, 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 spirits you, you begin to go and buy it 
So you must have to be very careful spiritually. Allow the spirit to lead you in every fashion that you are wearing or you are putting. Like so many girls, they are backsliding. You see their heads putting. Appreciate him. Come on, appreciate him. Encourage him. Hallelujah. Paul said, anyone who is not against us is for us. Come on, appreciate him. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. What's that? Boutique. Beauty, makeup artist. Education. Oh, both. Come, makeup artists. Oh. Hallelujah. We'll give you one minute. I'm, I'm very serious about it. I'm, I'm a strange man of a person. Hallelujah. One minute, all right? How do you plan to make our sisters nice and beautiful, all right? Without causing the brothers to go to hell. <laughs> brothers, am I speaking? Yeah. Am I speaking? Yeah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I will tr try by the grace of God to see that I make them up in such a way that to the glory of God, you make up to the glory of God and not to the glory of man. And just like I see it as a calling, I, I know it's not normal. It's not just a normal thing. Look good as in you know the right thing to wear, the right thing to put on. Even your lipstick should glorify God. Your eye pencil or whatever, your powder should glorify God. Not the one you, you put on and look like a masquerade. Praise God. Hallelujah. In other words, they are asking, ladies, how many percent of you is the real you? Hallelujah. As we all know, essence of everything is bad. Um, you can always look beautiful. Um, doing your makeup lightly, not too um, too bold. And when you are um, making up, you it should go with what you're wearing. And I like like now when you're applying pow powder or um, our foundation, whatever it. Okay, as a, as, as a Christian makeup artist, I would advise that you make up lightly. Don't make it too shouty. You still look beautiful the way Praying in tongues makes you beautiful. That's a big secret, I'm telling you. I know you will not agree. That's a big secret. I'm telling you. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in your mortal body, that same spirit will quicken, vitalize. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Um, I told some of my friends that sometimes when I get jobs and then you look at the people you're about to make up, you can't help but start praying. Hallelujah. Because sometimes you don't know where to start from again i'd like to say that trend changes but style is doesn't change at all so the best thing to do like she said is moderation hallelujah now the problem we have in the fashion world is that we ladies we don't want to wear what this this lady is wearing all of us we want to look different you know so to an extent we try to overdo things but the secret is just this look 60 percent the trend and then 40 percent your own spice thank you Hallelujah. Look, let me tell you something. <laughs> Listen to me. Save yourself headache and don't die for nothing. Do the best you can and leave the rest of God. Don't kill yourself and say, I must look this. Must you do it? Who is complaining about how you're looking? See, there, there's pressure to be everything. I don't dress because this is the trend. Hallelujah. 
I dress when I like something, I wear it. You don't put me under pressure and say, this is how men of God, I don't know what they believe, I don't know what they are doing. Don't put yourself under pressure, especially ladies. Say, ah, this we've won is 5,000. You have 6,000, you are dying to use the 5,000 and fix it. Wash the one that you have and, and use it again. Who said you keep using it for the rest of your life? Is it only your roommates that will know? Hallelujah. We put ourselves under all kinds of pressure. Blackberry, you must use the Blackberry. You must use this. If your phone does not have camera, you are embarrassed. You beg your friend to help you. You are not an ambassador. You, have, you look older than your age. Because if you keep doing that for years, you, you will look, the stress will kill you. Appreciate all these people. Go back to your seat. God bless you. So together, are we making progress? Hallelujah. I didn't call these people because of a variety tonight. Hallelujah. I called to test at a particular point when Jesus was teaching. He said, 12 disciples come. And he sent them. He said, let me know whether or not we are making sense. And they came back. He sent the 70. And the Bible says they came back rejoicing. And they said, even the devils were subject to us in thy name hallelujah it's important for us to know that there is transformation and there is change happening in the life of everybody not everybody is going to be a pastor here true or false so our ministry is not just for pastors not everybody here is going to be a, an entrepreneur a business person not everybody maybe not everybody will even marry i didn't say god said it i said not everybody you can choose hallelujah but that whatever it is the bible says we are god's workmanship created in christ jesus that's what it means to be an ambassador an ambassador is the representative of a government if we if we just work on ministers alone what happens to the politicians that's why nigeria is suffering we have men of god we have no voice in our senate and the one or two that are there the voice of the world will strangle them to a point that they have no voice we don't want it to happen that way there is a strategy that god is giving us are you following me now i've said it here that the true apostolic ministry does not just train people it invades people and shifts cultures systems so whether it's steve strings or um or jimmy on air jimmy when we see you on exclusive to divinity or um alheri doing our fashion whatever you know all of these things that we can see that christ is being directly before now the church has thought that the only way to train people is to just get them to pray get them to study the bible hallelujah and then have their nice and small house but there are policies being formed every day and we are suffering the consequences. If we do not have voices that rise in these systems, a time will come the church will be strangled. Are you listening to me? In a place like Zaria, it's very difficult to give a church a land. Hallelujah. There are many difficult ways. So don't say it does not matter. Otherwise, a time will come when certain policies will be put together. Do you know right now in which of the countries i don't know they officially permitted gay all right and not just gay but the gay can choose any church that they want to wed so they can come for koinonia now and say you must wed us and if you do not the government will seize your license you know it's only in nigeria that you can start ministry when you like abroad you there are there are ways you do it in, in, in you don't just do it whether you're a miracle worker or not are you following me now so you can imagine that that kind of thing don't say it cannot come to nigeria this is spiritual and if believers do not rise in that area if god does not have a voice we are in trouble hallelujah and this is what kingdom invasion is all about this is the principle that great men like sondia delaja used and they caused the orange revolution in ukraine a city 
that is a racist nation but he brought a revolution in that city and forever his name will be in the sands of time as a revivalist the church must become a platform for training and building believers must be able to come to church and not just get educated but get equipped and trained believers are not idiots we are intelligent people we are just spiritual that's all it doesn't mean we don't have common sense the church has taught believers to kill away your common sense that the way you love god is have no sense of reasoning again so the moment you step out of church you have no relevance to the system whatsoever we need believers that can have a voice both in the system jesus spoke to pharisees the government of the land he had something when he went to farmers and business people he could communicate to them he went to prostitutes and the outcasts he could relate with them jesus could relate with every strata of society he met the military people he had something to tell them he understood the law to the point that when caesar came he said give to caesar what belongs to caesar he understood the legal side of ministry Paul had this understanding. A time came, it was not his anointing that saved him. He said, look, let me tell you, I am a Jew. I was trained under Gamaliel, a Pharisee to the core. I understand these principles. Don't take it for granted that I'm preaching the cross. Doesn't mean I'm an idiot. I'm an intelligent scribe and Pharisee. And it saved him. By the way, let me tell you, Paul was not a tent maker. All right? Paul made prayer shawls, not tents. To add it to your Bible knowledge, Paul was not a tent maker. The translators made a mistake. His job was prayer shawls, not tents. Hallelujah. Do you believe that we are the revivalists that are going to shake this nation? Do you believe that we are the ones who will arise? Do you believe that above and beyond ABU, above and beyond Zaria, there is an international anointing upon your life. This is what God told me to do tonight. Do you believe that all these teachings on faith, we are teaching on faith, we are teaching on character, we are teaching on giving. You know, I've been so, I'm sure the ministers have been impressed by the turnout of Titus again and again and the way people are becoming obedient to the word of God. Hallelujah. We are teaching these things. Grooming, equipping. This is what it means to equip, to supply the tools that it takes to rule and to reign. I assure you, you will not regret what you are doing. Many of you will thank God that you pass by Zaria in your destiny. Hallelujah. We are God's workmanship. Say, I am his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. I am absolutely confident. Listen to me. Listen to me. Do you know that seated among us here, if only God can open our eyes prophetically to see the caliber and the class of people who are seated here. Maybe you did not know that they will graduate such great generals. Today they celebrate generals all around. If they had known that all of these men today who are generals and world-renowned figures, this is how I've said something. I said this thing right from the days we used to meet at the back of um, at the back of, of chapel. I said we are going to be great in life, and the beautiful part is we will all know ourselves. We'll be related to one another. Hallelujah. Creating a kingdom community is the key to sustaining kingdom values. We are not wasting our time. This is not just church as usual. Oh, you jot and write, hallelujah, you get up. Uh -uh. That you leave koinonia with a resolve in your heart. Without this understanding, your Christianity becomes boring because you don't know what else to do when you are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. We do not know that Christianity is not just a religion of servitude, but it's a call to responsibility where we can represent Christ. So you see that every time you are building, while you are in class, others just want to pass and go. You are conscious of the fact that I am an ambassador. So they are just doing malpractice. They are not even listening to what the lecturer is saying because they want to go. But you know that I am different. Hallelujah. When people are getting thorough, you are serious, you are buying books, you are building, you lock yourself, you are fasting like that gentleman for five days 
why will someone be fasting our media department just a week or two finished i think five or seven days fast how can a media department be fasting for what to hold camera but this is how much they see where they are going listen your comprehension of where god is taking you determines how much you are willing if you know you are going far it will not be a burden for you to prepare right now are you listening to me the way many of us are preparing we plan to end in zaria or to end in kaduna state or to end in the north i told myself something i said before my parents go to be with the lord they will know they give birth to a son indeed hallelujah can your parents say that about you or they just look at you and when you are getting married your father just look at you and say thank god thank god 29 years of misery thank god we are his workmanship i bring you a message very simple message tonight that the lord is counting on you the lord is counting on ambassadors and generals don't just grow up and get old realize that you have an assignment shout it say i have an assignment i have a mandate i am not a non-entity i'm going somewhere to happen yes yes i'm telling you i know this about my life i knew this years ago and today by grace i have the privilege to teach and talk to god's people it's not a mistake hallelujah are you listening to me please steve stand up he was my roommate we were roommates hallelujah and what happened those times he used to bring keyboard room 155 old block he will bring keyboard and i will be on the keyboard and he'll be on the guitar and then andy now ambassador who received a, a, one of the awards as, as as the best gospel rapper that was where we will worship then no koinonia no apostle who no apostle can no nothing no money to buy any suits like this no nothing nobody calling you sir or no nothing but we believe and steve would play the guitar i remember sometimes during our, our devotion in the morning other people from other rooms would come because we will worship i'll never forget the time we had a divine visitation we were worshiping and we held our hands three of us and we prayed in tongues and there was such a dense presence of god and that was how we lay down and slept there the power of god i remember those times i'll be sitting down and the power of god will come upon me so much and i'll just look for them and just be lay hands <laughs> those were days of practice we are still under practice but a higher level of practice who would have known he didn't have the name strings yet but today the grace of god has made him a voice around and everywhere you go to you save steve strings people clap and some of you admire him and say oh dear just like many of you will stand five years from now and look at your congregations yes 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 you'll be married to the pastor and when you stand and see every kind of misbehavior you address it squarely and they ask you where did you learn this kind of thing from you say i remember there used to be one one big mouthed young guy like this in zaria that will not let us rest ah how come you are walking and you are prophesying like this yeah there was one yellow guy and i saw the way you prophesy and every time you're making your congregation laugh and they say where did you learn it from come on tell me who you say was doing it yes this is where god is taking us steve strings i just brought him up to tell you and this is only the beginning i will not be surprised today if i see steve strings playing and you're watching kicc and you just start and say tell me i'm dreaming this is Steve. Don't say you are dreaming. You think he's playing. 
or one day suddenly you have been praying that i won't go on air i will go one day <laughs> let me assure you i know many of you are praying and say kai oh god please all these kind of people don't go i will go god will take me there and you will be part of the partners because god will speak to you and you are promised to be obedient hallelujah i believe what i'm saying with the whole of my heart this is not the end of eni this is not the end of koinonia this is just a step out of the cave compared to where we are going for your life i may not know you by name listen to me you are lost in the crowd sitting here that was how i used to sit down years ago when men of god are preaching i'll be in fcs sitting quietly and men of god will come and preach some of you the grace of god is upon your life and lost in that crowd and today by grace this is how some of you by grace will be called out this is how some of you will stand some of you will be the dangotes and the otedolas and they'll be asking you to say how come nigeria is booming in agriculture like this and you say there is one called the holy spirit the holy spirit as a businessman you say yes yes you not just say god those of you who said god here yeah, i hope you know the god you are talking about i believe this with all my heart this is what we are striving after some of you are seated here you will have ministries you will be the next benny hymns you know i'm not lying the spirit of god tells you that what this guy is saying is not a lie some of you women will move in strange anointings. You will move in the anointings of Catherine Kuman, the anointings of Amphi McPherson, Madame Gunion, Maria Woodward Eater. You will bring revival in this nation. I know it. We are going to pray just for five or ten minutes and then we are done. This is my message tonight. I kept thinking about this all through. And I was wondering, I said, Lord, you really want me to do this? And the Lord said, yes. We are going to rededicate ourselves and say, Lord, here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life I want to give in serving my fellow man. Doing the will of God. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Here is my life. I want to give. I want to give. In serving my fellow man. Doing the will of God, here is my life, here is my life, here is my life, rise up on your feet, here is my life, here is my life, come on sing, here is my life, here is my life. Here is my life. Go ahead and begin to pray and say, Lord, here is my life. Pray. Say, Lord, I'm the one Joshua Selman has been talking about. You will commit great ministries to the nation. You will commit anointings into my hands. You will commit grace. Pray. Say, Lord, you are talking about me tonight. Here is my life. Pray. Kingdom invasion. Invading the cosmos. I am God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Bible says, you are a royal priesthood. You are an holy nation. A peculiar people to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light pray say lord i will change 
my sphere of influence wherever you are sending me to pray here is my life train me let the wisdom of Bezalel come let the anointing of Ezekiel come let the prosperity of Solomon come let the leadership of Joseph come pray let the grace of Esther come let the favor of Jesus come let the anointing of Paul come let the prophetic dimension of Agabus come pray let the evangelistic grace of Philip come I receive grace hallelujah listen now we are going to pray every call of an ambassador write it is a call unto responsibility and responsibility entails preparation preparation entails sacrifice every call of an ambassador you are not at your best yet no matter how great you are i'm speaking to generals tonight you are not at your best yet you know how to weave why are you stopping there you know how to make hair why are you stopping there every time let me teach you something every time go on your knees before god and pray on your giftings and pray on your skill say lord let an anointing come upon it if you are going to have the next mcdonald's say lord there will be an anointing it will be a platform to heal the sick that your eatery will be known as a miracle center hungry people will come and eat and live with more than just satisfaction there's a song alvin slaughter sang he said what's that you have in your hands i can use it only if you are willing to lose it i learned it from jang Fa. years ago it was his song he liked it i tried to learn it from him i, I just couldn't get it he said i'll take the little that you have and make it brand new why because i am el shaddai tonight can you submit your giftings and say lord it may not be much but it can change nations lift your hands and say lord i surrender my giftings and my skill it may not be much i may just know how to set sound but lord take it tonight use it for your glory anoint it i know i don't have a voice i'm a shy person but breathe upon this servant of yours and make a voice out of me i just know how to do beauty makeup and fashion breathe upon it oh god and give me a voice to the nations i will stand for you lord i don't know how to preach i only have a passion for the lost and the lord is saying i will anoint you what you have is enough come on pray Lord, this is what I have. Two loaves and five, five fish. Lord, can it feed 5,000 people? Yes, it can. Lift up your two loaves and five fish of talent. Lord, I am not eloquent. I cannot speak good English. I didn't go to a good school, but I desire to serve you. Yes, you can take you and make a wonder. He made a wonder out of his camera. Lord, my village is not in the map of Nigeria. Lord, I don't know my purpose in life, but I love you. Yes, he can use you. That's a good place to start. Lord, I don't know why I'm here on earth, but you can start from there. I don't know where you are taking me, oh God, but I'm willing. I'm available. I'm available. I will not disappoint you. I am available. Hallelujah. Run away. Listen to me. Run away from any company of friends that are visionless people and will not help you where you are going. I don't care how long you are with them. Even if they grew up in your yard, this is the time to tell them, look, 
I'm going somewhere. Abraham got to a point where he told the servants, you cannot follow me from here. It's not that I hate you, but where I'm going requires that I carry my sacrifice alone. Many of you, that's the decision that will make God start using you. This one leg in here, and then another leg there. Better take the other leg this night and get serious. Sit down, buy books. Go to Jordan Bookstore. Jordan is there. Buy the books. You may have only Gary run away from that stupid faith message that teaches you that if you don't have anything now, your faith is not working. Sit down with your Gary and buy the books and, and, and drink it honorably. The great drank Gary like that too. There was a time we drank it and we drank it honorably. We ate bread and put granite inside and drank it with ten eras over and we were praying in tongues. Don't think we didn't do it. Oh yes, we did it. The time we took ginger, I killed two birds with one stone because I used to sing there. So I used the ginger to that's all I could get and then I'll exercise my voice. Ten nera bread and we put granite inside and eat it and say, Lord, you are faithful. Now you are getting only beans and you are saying for the past four days I've eaten beans and they've taught you that's not a sign of faith. Use your money to buy books. Buy the truth. Sell it not. Sit down. Don't buy suits. You don't need to look like Joshua Selman. It took me years to get here. Don't frustrate yourself. Some of the suits I'm having, people sold it into my life. Nobody will sow it into your life yet. So stop trying to say I'm trying to look. Mm -mm. Go and sit down. Sit down with your one trouser. Wash it, iron it, carry your Bible. You can't afford a concordance, but you can afford 100 naira cafe. Other people are browsing in the day. Beg your friend for his internet, for his modem, and sit down and browse. You're signing a track record in the realm of the spirit. Say, lady, don't sit down and say, Who come and marry me? Go and find out how to be a mother, how to be a wife, how to be a minister. Go and ask people that are married, buy juice and go and greet. Our, our, our mommy prof is here. Our mommy Nankwa's mother is here. Buy juice and go and greet them. Pastor William's wife is here. Buy juice one day and go and greet and say, Mommy, what will you advise me as a young lady? I'll be going around and say, Who will come and marry me? Who will come and go and marry me? Hallelujah. And I say, Guy, stop claiming the life of successful people. And sit down and start asking them what they did to get to where they are, they are getting to. All those I claim, I claim, I claim. You see, and you, I claim. You even draw it. You will draw it and sit down and see it there. I tell you, it will not come to pass. Hallelujah. You can buy Zobo. I know that we have not attained yet. But there is something we can tell you. Hallelujah. Make pepper soup and run and corner Jake's. And say, Jake's, please. God is sending me to the nations. We went to massacre. We went for Panchin Crusade. We have gone for crusades. Jake single-handedly, as an undergraduate student, took over the Church of God in, in, in Shika, the Church of God in Giwa. We used to tease him and say, he has Giwa, Giwa Church or Giwa Assembly. He was the president of, uh, of Gospel Team. He has something to say. It's time for you to begin to respect the grace and the people around you. You can look at your roommate. Stop looking at your roommate as your roommate. Start looking at the anointing upon your roommate. You may be 10 years older than the person. Hallelujah. Very important. The person may even be your mother. One day come and kneel down before your mother, not as your mother, but as the servant of God. And say, bless me. Let your hand touch my head. Open up a door of destiny. We did it in Lagos. Abi. There was a time we met Mommy Oje. That family is an enviable family. All of us got down on our knees. We said, Mommy, we will not go, we will not come back to Lagos until something happens. And that woman lives. See, let me tell you, we are like bees. We are a product of many blessings. It's not everything we got on our secret place. Follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the glory. Some of you who are very rude to elderly people, you see, whether it's your mother or your brother, you see everybody just insults them because you now know how to use blackberry say honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long you don't honor them you will die young it's not a prophecy it's the word of god men of character and grace say after me i'm willing to sit down 
Say it, I'm willing to sit down and pay the price and God will honor me. One more time, say I'm willing to sit down and pay the price. Yes. Let's see more of you in Jordan Bookstore. Go and meet the media. Collect koinonia messages. God is sending you for ministry. You don't have the tape of anybody. Only the program that you preach. You just preach all kinds of disjointed scriptural things. That's the only tape you have. You are learning. Go and buy. Get these things. They are free. Sit with them. Sit with them. Don't say because they invited you and say, okay, go and preach in this final year program. You suddenly carry one lady and say, come, you help me with my itinerary. Sit down, Jare. When I see people do all those things, I tell them, sit down. I don't care what you think you are prophesying. I'm not the kind of person you come to me and say, God said the moon has start. I tell you, sit down. Are you blessed tonight? Lord, we thank you. Give us grace to sit down. I assure you, brothers and sisters, you will bless God for these days of your life. You will bless God. Ask our mothers and our parents, and they will tell you as young people, we are setting a great foundation. Lord, we give you praise. Be glorified. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Shekinah glory for Shekinah glory for Let this truth that makes mighty man reign in us let the light that swallows weakness reign in us. Let the light that destroys fear reign in us. Let the weight of your glory fall. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh Lord, let your glory cover us. Let it cover us. Let it cover us. For oh, where we stand is holy ground. Where thou standest. Bow down and worship him. I will worship him. Oh, his presence is here, majesty. Lord, I worship you. Bow down and worship him. Lord, we enter in. Lord, we enter in. Consuming fire, sweet perfume. Truly, your awesome presence it fills this room. Consuming fire, you're the sweet perfume, your awesome presence, your changing presence, your lifting presence, your mighty presence, your glorious presence. Mysterious presence, your precious presence, it fills this room. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, 
I see your awesome presence. That's what makes the difference. It fills this room. So I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing glory to your name. So let the weight of your glory cover us. Kataparata posada brati la kaparya da bala. Your river flow, your river flow. Let this truth. Of your kingdom reigning us, empower us. Let the weight of your glory Kadosh, 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 Kadosh. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Koinonia welcomes you, oh God. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome in this place. Yeah. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Never get tired of what you are doing. Never get tired of what you are doing. Let the light of your river flow and may this truth of your kingdom reign in me. Let the way. Of your glory, mantle us with your glory.
hymns, spiritual songs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God. Thank you for your presence. You bring to our midst the presence of the Father. You bring to our midst the presence of heaven. Hallelujah. The only song, the 
angels sing to you alone you who seated on your throne forever you will reign hallelujah hallelujah we do these things because this is a place of encounter this is the protocol of an encounter when you invoke his presence in worship then he comes Lord Jesus thank you May the name of the Lord forever be lifted in this place. May religion never, ever replace your presence in this place. May this place remain a place of encounter. Encounter with the Spirit of God. Encounter with the precepts of the kingdom. Encounter with the powers of the age to come. Strengthen us, O oh God, by the spirit of revelation. Let the vistas of the heavens be opened. As we explore the mysteries of the kingdom, make us strong. May we be the ones that know their God. And may we do exploits. Hallelujah. Just the voices. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, my eyes will see and my heart will receive. Pray. Cry from the depth of your heart. Open our eyes, O oh God, that we may behold wondrous things. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And also is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. 49. And as we have borne the image, oh hallelujah. As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. I'd like us to read verse 49. Read it with understanding. One to read. Please help us with the fun. Let's my Bible. The Bible says, as we have borne it begins to give us a contrast 
of inhabitants and beings in this earth. Right? When you read the preceding verses, it says there are different kinds of bodies. Please listen to me. The teaching tonight will bless you. He said there are some bodies that are terrestrial. There are some bodies that are celestial. And all of them are within this territory. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says, in the same way, since we have borne the image of the earthly, there is a system in God that can help us manifest experientially the image of the heavenly. And this is what I'm going to be dealing with very briefly tonight. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 10. Help us, O Lord. Grant us understanding in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 10. As we have borne the image of the earthly, so we will bear the image of the heavenly. Verse 10. One to read if you are there. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? Not on earth. Not on earth. Thy will be done in earth. In the same way your will has been done in heaven. In heaven your will has been done. And that's why the fullness of your kingdom find expression. But Lord, let your kingdom find expression in the earth in the same degree, in the same dimension, and in the same similitude. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to share with us something that has helped my life through the years and is still helping my life. This for me is one of the keys to carrying very heavy weights of the glory, the life, the power, the beauty of the kingdom upon your life. If you will pay attention to what I'm about to teach you in these few minutes and you believe it and you walk in that light, then you will find out that First Corinthians 15 from verse 49 will become your testimony that here and now you will be a manifestation of a reality that is not obtained in this realm. You will walk as though a God upon the earth. Hallelujah. Jesus began to talk and he said, when you pray, let this be part of the contents of your prayer. Our Father, who resides in the heavens and he says we hallow you revere him come to him with the spirit of reverence and worship and after that let the consummation of your prayer let the core of your prayer be your kingdom come. your influence the atmosphere of heaven the same principle that makes heaven heaven Lord, let it find expression in the earth. Not just on the ground, but in the earth. These mortal bodies of clay. Let the heavenly, let that which has made celestial beings find its way to the earth realm. Hallelujah. And find its way upon the inhabitants of the earth. That way, your will will be done. Your kingdom will come. Your glory will be revealed. Write this word down please. Transformation. Transformation. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. And it says where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Not lawlessness. Freedom space and he said we all wherever that place is certain things happen there and one of it is that we all with open face there is an unveiling it says we behold him as though looking at ourselves in a mirror 
and then we begin to experience transformation so we are the image of the earthly but as we behold the heavenly there is a transformation that begins to happen and we begin to look like the heavenly it says we are changed from glory one dimension of glory to another and the name given to that process is transformation transformation is the process that makes you become like Jesus Christ transformation is the process that makes you become like Jesus Christ you can expound on it transformation is the process of alignment and conformity the process that process of alignment that process of conformity that makes a man become a manifestation and an expression of the heavenly that makes any man become an expression of Jesus the very Christ upon the earth transformation is the name given to the spiritual process the spiritual technology the system by which the earthly becomes the heavenly the system by which the weak becomes strong the system by which the canal becomes spiritual it's called transformation the desire of god listen the desire of god is that the fullness of his glory his glory means his nature his essence the fullness of his power the fullness of his kingdom his influence the fullness of his culture his way of life invade the earth and find expression in the earth exactly the way it finds expression in heaven that is the heart cry of the father that the fullness of his culture the fullness of his principles his glory, his power, his wisdom, find expression in the earth as it is in the heavens. God is not satisfied just with the beauty and the, the excellence of heaven. He wants to birth that same experience. That was the idea behind the formation of Eden. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of his character. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of his excellence. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of him. That's why he gave his exact dominion to man. Not an inferior type. His very dominion gave it to man. And it still is his desire. That his fullness will find expression. If that happens in the earth. Then we will see the harvest of souls. Then we will see transformation and revival across individuals and territories. Then we will see the systems and the kingdoms of this world becoming experientially the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Then the ultimate plan of God will be fulfilled. That all things be headed up in Christ even as he submits to the Father. And so the strategy is that Jesus submits to the Father. And then the church, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, like a faithful bride, submits to the authority of Jesus. And then through dominion and a demonstration of the reality of the kingdom, the church, the battle axe, will bring creation under its feet. And then all things, according to Colossians, becomes headed up in Christ. And he becomes the fullness of all things. This is the eternal plan of God. But for that to happen, his kingdom must come. Listen, please, get what I'm saying. His kingdom, his influence, his glory. When that happens, then we will see a reality that is foreign to the earth finding expression. Because there are vessels that become containers of that reality. It is at that point we will see the eyes of the blind open 
by a technology that medicine cannot explain. It is at that point we will see men walk like gods upon the earth. Right? When they saw the apostles, they called them Zeus and Hermes. Greek gods. Because they operated laws that defied what man had known. And the heart cry of the father is that his kingdom, the fullness of his influence, the fullness of his power and his glory will find expression. Until that happens, God is still being misrepresented. The fullness of who God is will only be understood when his kingdom comes. If the kingdom of God does not show up in his fullness, certain dimensions of God will still remain vague and misunderstood. And that misconception will paint very wrong images about God. Are you following what I'm saying now? So the desire of God is that his kingdom will find expression in the earth. The desire of God is not just to take us to heaven. Please get this. The desire of God is not just for rapture to happen and the antichrist judged. All those things are part of the processes that will lead to the culmination because he is God and his sovereignty will make his prophecy to come to pass. However, he said, thou art my battle axe and my weapons of war. With you I will beat down nations. And so as it is, we do not yet see all things according to Hebrews under his feet. Are you, are you understanding the teaching tonight? So God wants heaven to find expression. Not just as a song. Not just as a cliche. Not just as a Christian suggestion. Not just as a theological fact. He wants it here and now. Here and now. In this place, your kingdom reigns, your kingdom reigns. In this place, here and now, we let your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. So here and now, in this life and with this mortal body, he wants the image of the earthly to experience the fortest of the glories and the realities that dwell in heaven. But the limitation to that agenda is hidden in this word. Transformation or lack of it. The process by which the earthly becomes the heavenly. The process by which the treasure is transferred in earthen vessels. The treasure by which a celestial body becomes terrestrial. The process by which an ordinary biological being becomes literally a celestial being. When that happens, then we will bring our lives, our families, our territories and the nations under the submission of the Christ. Listen, listen. What I am telling you is the reason why you are alive right now. If nobody has taught you this, then I want you to know that you do not even understand what we call Christianity or what we call the faith life. It is our participation in bringing this agenda to pass. Are we following now? And there is a way God wants to achieve this. I've taught it under the message, the emergence. You can get part three, but I just recap on it before we go to the main discussion tonight. I told you that there is a spiritual strategy to which cosmos will be subdued and will come under the governing influence of the king. The name of that strategy is the church. The church is not the coming together of people. Not just that. The church is not just a local assembly. The church is the name of the only spiritual strategy that is capable of birthing the purposes of God in its fullness. And so he says, Thou art Peter. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. 
and he says upon this rock I will lift that strategy that ecclesia and the gates of hell will not prevail so the church is God's only chance and hope not because he's not mighty he has chosen through his predeterminate counsel that it is only through the church that the multifaceted wisdom of the Christ will find expression and so the agenda of the of the father is at the mercy of the understanding and the participation of the church it's not at the mercy of the might of God it's not at the mercy of the sovereignty of God it's at the mercy of the equipping and the participation of the church it is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors for the equipping that they enlighten the saints that they build up the saints that they orient the saints that they they become instruments of birthing transformation in the saints so that the saints now transform will do the work of the ministry what is the work of the ministry giving god space to find expression in the earth this is what ministry is all about Hallelujah. So the spirit of religion is the operation of darkness that masquerades itself as light. And rather than exposing the people to the light of God that equips them and prepares them as an army, it gives them a form of godliness. But the, the capacity, the power in it to birth that transformation is not there. So for such people, their testimony is ever learning but never come into the knowledge of the truth. So they learn. They have devotionals. Right? There's all kinds of Bible studies and prayer. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there are church services. However, those activities have been shrouded in religion. And so it does not sustain the ability to break out the light of God in them. And so after many years of being in church, after many years of being an elder, being a deacon, being a pastor, after many years of a church existing, that desire of God is unable to find expression because the average believer does not even know why they come to church. They come to church as a way of satisfying guilt. They come to church as a way of, of trying to dance to status quo so that they can avoid the embarrassment of being told they are carnal. But it's much more than that. There is a heart cry. And those who will carry out this heart cry are the ones who become unkillable. They are the ones who the Bible talks about them. It says for them, those people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake saying, don't touch these ones. It is for those kind of people that God would rather a nation die than for something to happen to them. They are the ones who are granted access to taste of the powers of the age to come. Realities that are not a portion for our dispensation. But on the strength of their yieldedness, they can touch into certain things. This is what happened to David. It was not given to him to see the coronation of Jesus. It was not in his dispensation. But his loyalty and allegiance and alignment opened him up to the mysteries of the spirit and he peeped into the coronation and he said the lord said to my lord sit thou at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool the prophet isaiah was not supposed to see the outpouring of the spirit that joel would prophesy about but because of his alignment he tasted of an ability and a dimension that was not made for his dispensation and he saw in a vision with stammering lips and another tongue will they praise me wherein I have said this is the rest and the refreshing it was Joel that began to prophesy all of these prophets bits and pieces of their revelation into that ultimate agenda and here we stand today the prophesied generation here we stand today the generation that all the prophets have spoken about. While they stood here, they saw you in the loins of prophecy. And here we are. 
majorly wasting our time and wallowing in the in the futility of religion unable to partner with the holy spirit to exert any tangible force in the spirit as far as advancing his agenda is we are caught up in the web of religion pastor apostle prophet caught up in the religion of meetings and conventions and conferences organizing ourselves and organizing god and his agenda out of our program but jesus said this jesus himself not a prophet he said your desire should be to participate in any way to see his kingdom come meaning if you are alive today hearing the sound of my voice and there is no active contribution from your life in birthing this agenda you do not deserve to live for he said i shall not die he didn't say live to roam around wallowing in religion he said i shall not die but leave to declare is God speaking to us and so the way he will achieve this agenda is through the church God wants to do this by revealing himself listen the way that the agenda of God will find expression is when his glory is revealed first in this earthen vessel and then through this earthen vessel to the entire territory of human race so the agenda is twofold the manifestation of it first to you the battle acts he wants you to experience his glory for yourself in your life that your life becomes an expression of his beauty and glory that your life becomes a validation to the fact that the kingdom is true and that the power of god exists and then out of that experience you begin to dispense the grace and the glory and the anointing and the power from your personal testimony as a contribution of your quota to see his kingdom come are we learning something say after me god desires that my life will host his presence god desires that my life my body my spirit will host his power god desires that i become an expression of the reality of god's ability here and now god desires that i become an expression of heaven and everything it carries here and now that's god's desire for you god's desire is bigger than giving you a wife don't reduce god God's desire is bigger than giving you a jeep. The devil can give you a jeep. God's desire is bigger than giving you crowds and giving you a church and giving you anointing. God's desire is that the fullness of himself, he wants you to become a conduit of his glory, a conduit of his wisdom. That word, dogza, the full representation of all that is obtainable in him as far as our dispensation is given and defined by he wants it to find expression so the limitation of the agenda of god is the limitation of the ability of the saints to be transformed and not the limitation of his might the inability of the saints to contend for transformation has misrepresented god in the earth this is the tragedy in the earth right now He wants to reveal his wisdom and his glory and his power in your life first and then through your life please don't make that mistake to just think he just wants to reveal his glory through you no he wants to reveal himself in you then through you in you then through you in you then through you there are two limitations that the bible reveals to us two limitations that can frustrate the church from achieving this there are two limitations that the bible points to us that as much as we say we love god there are two limitations that will stop us from ultimately satisfying the desire of the father number one the first limitation is what the bible calls the gates of hell the gates of hell Matthew 16 verse 18 the gates of hell 
The first limitation that the Bible openly points out to us that will be a challenge. It will be a standard that will attempt to resist this agenda. The gates of hell. He said, and I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my ecclesia and the gates of hell. Not demons, not principalities. The gates, the fullness of the arsenal of hell. What is the gate of hell? It means Satan and all the arsenals and the strategies that he has. Satan and all the arsenals and strategies that he has in an attempt to fight the advancement of the kingdom. That's what is called the gate of hell. The gate of hell represents Satan and all his gimmicks comes from the Greek word stratomai. It says do not be unaware of the devices that word is stratomai, the strategies, the skills, the arsenals of Satan. There is a formula he uses for deception. There is a formula he uses for witchcraft. There is a formula he uses. Those formulas are like secret codes. They are also called mysteries. That is the principle with which he has brought nations. For instance, the Bible tells us that Satan uses the spirit of fear to put people in captivity. It says, and to deliver them through who through fear have all their lifetime be subject to bondage. So the spiritual strategy to bring bondage is fear. And like Job, what you fear now becomes your lot. Are you getting me? So the Bible says the gates of hell will rise. You want to get a job, there is a spiritual formula to frustrate you. It is part of the arsenals of the gate of hell. You want to get married, there is a spiritual formula. Because your marriage has a route to bringing this agenda to pass. Since that there is a prophet that your womb should produce. And Satan will fight it. It's not about you coming from east or west. It's about something. When he said the seed, the seed shall bruise the head of the serpent. Satan started looking for everybody that looks like the seed. He's still searching today. Hallelujah. And he will use everything. Everything. He will use everything. Your sensory perceptions. Your financial condition. Your family situation. Your academic condition. Every strategy. Satan is desperate. More desperate than you can ever imagine. To see that the agenda of God does not come. Let me tell you. Those who trivialize the reality of Satan and his plot to fight to death the agenda of God are joking Jesus himself said there will only be one limitation to the building of the church the gates of hell the spirit of religion came from Satan activity without power came from Satan because when the nation of Israel in Egypt wanted their exodus the moment they told Moses we want to go Moses told A.M. Pharaoh what did Pharaoh say occupy them is because they are free start giving them activities let them have meetings upon meetings seminars upon seminars and then they get busy and it convinces them that activities equal to spirituality is god speaking to us tonight hallelujah the gates of hell they will haunt you i guarantee you when Jesus went to fast, Satan followed him and stood somewhere watching Jesus praying, listening to his prayer points as he communicated with heaven for 40 days. Satan was nowhere else in the world roaming around. He was waiting because it was a, it was a, 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 a defining moment for Jesus. As soon as Jesus was done, here comes Satan, his strategy again. If you are really the son of God, turn these stones to bread. And he took him up a cliff and so on and so forth. And the Bible says when Jesus overcame him, what did he do? He left him for a season. Is it in your Bible? He left him forever. Make no mistakes that because you think you are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, the devil will cross his leg and say, wow, promise. So you are going to have a great ministry in the future. Well done. You are a new creation in Christ. You are joking. You are joking. Hallelujah. The gates of hell they will rise brothers and sisters let me tell you
the gates of hell will rise. You are a brother, you love God. The gates of hell will rise through different strategies. Hallelujah. Look at Samson. The gates of hell rose up. He was just moving and one demon entered a lion. And the lion came to feed. You think the lion just, he was just strolling around and he said, lion, let's, let's try wrestling. You think that's what was happening to Samson? Because Satan was trying everywhere to find out about his strength. So he used the strongest of the beasts. And a lion came and Samson tore it into pieces. And Satan said, it's not there. Strategy change. He used the Philistines. They caught him. Right? And he, he used the jawbone of an ass. Satan said, I missed it again. Another strategy. Delilah. If I've used physical strength, let me use emotional strength. Where is that beautiful Delilah? And Delilah came. And Satan saw how vulnerable Samson was. He said, we are making progress. We are making progress. He, he, Delilah insisted. And when she cut off his hair, the judge of Israel had been brought to his knees. Hell began to celebrate. The gates of hell prevailing. Samson's eyes were plucked off. Samson's hair was cut off. And I can imagine God saying, come on, Samson, you gave it cheap to Delilah. You would have asked me for a wife. I would have given you a wife. And Delilah ran away. But then what they did not know is that there is still a package in God to restore. Listen. God said, Samson, I know you have blown it. Your Lord now is death. But you would, you would die in victory. Let all the people that represent evil in that land gather in one auditorium and the strength will be restored. And Samson said, Oh Lord, I know I've sinned against you. The, the Lord you have given me for my generation as a judge, I allowed a woman sleeping with Delilah. That's what some of you are doing as you are looking at me and laughing as if it does not matter. You carry your death. You are insulting Esau for taking porridge. And some of us have done what is cheaper than taking porridge. When you know what is upon your shoulder, you will package yourself and warn yourself from the spirit. Samson made Israel to suffer just because the strength and the salvation of Israel was upon him as a judge. But then, you will not say he didn't fulfill his assignment because he pushed. He said, oh God, let me die with them. And while he pushed, the Bible says he killed more people in his death than he did in his lifetime. Imagine the mass burial of evil. All the evil men gathered together with their idol and he crushed them into pieces and died with them. Every man that showed up was given a piece of this assignment and they ran with it. They didn't do it part time. They spent their life doing it. When Jezebel was threatening the prophets of God, Elijah the Tishbite arose, a fiery prophet who frustrated the counsel of darkness and left. And now, probably in the 60s or the 50s or the 40s, who knows, one woman was crying in slave trade and say, oh Lord, I may die, but let this little child of mine exalt your name and that person became your ancestor became your grandfather became your father and now it is you that woman's prayer who died in the slave trade that lord i saw a vision that africa must be saved that's you sitting down roaming around and god is saying do you not know you are a manifestation of prophecy how we limit him how we limit him The gates of hell. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18. Let's hurry up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain.
Break every chain. Break every chain. Listen. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, but once again, the gates of hell. Satan personally took it as a responsibility. Satan told all the demons, stand. This Paul, I've noticed this guy is, I mean, this guy is just winning souls and expanding and enlarging the territories of the kingdom. I will hinder him by myself. Listen, when you see people being challenged and confronted, shut your mouth. It's because they have, many of you have not received any confrontation. You think it's just because you are in Christ. It's because you have not done anything striking enough. At least start praying. Pray to a point that it generates fire and see what happens. That's the night somebody will appear to you and say, let me warn you. Your father obeyed us. Your mother obeyed us. Take care and leave. You wake up in the morning and say, what happened? I'm praying and I'm seeing somebody appear. And you think it's backsliding. It's because fire did something in the spirit. The gates of hell. Let me tell you, there are giants in every mountain. Don't let any man fool you. Mandela Kapatosa Protusi Kaliabatan. I pity any man of God that wants ministry, wants crowd, wants miracle, and will not pray. You are roaming around doing geo or doing president. You will die like a chicken, I tell you. See, let me tell you. Though if you know how desperate Satan is to destroy your life. Satan does not mind if you die after koinonia on your way going. That's when you will appreciate the mercy and the grace of God. Because for one month now, you have not prayed, some of you. And you have traveled and gone everywhere. And yet nothing happened. Just a Kai. It's just because I'm in Christ. Ay, 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 ay. A lady prayed in the night. Brothers and sisters, prayed in the night, physically, in the morning, her uncle called her and said, what did you do? Her physical uncle alive. What did you do? He said, I can't remember. He said, be careful. You don't know who you are trying. Let me tell you, gate will not open like that. You want to bring breakthrough? You want barrenness to stop in your family? You want oppression to stop? The cause of poverty to stop? All this, all this tea Christianity will only, the devil will encourage you to keep doing it. But let fire burn upon the altar and you watch reactions from the gate of hell. Oh yes, I tell you, reaction from the gate of hell is not a sign that the victory of Jesus is not there. It's a sign that something you are doing is striking a chord. How many of you have finished praying? And you find out that your loved ones start insulting you and there is fight in the house. It's when you finish praying. The day you don't pray, there's joy and peace and love. Even somebody who doesn't like you just loves you. But you take out time and blast in tongues for two hours non-stop. As you step out, they say, look, I've been warning you. And you're saying, what did I do? It's not the person, the gates of hell. Attempting to stop you. You tell that man, no, I won't sleep with you. I'm going somewhere and see what happens. That's the day somebody will come and tell you, we don't do it like this in Nigeria. Better bend or become a fool. And you sit down and say, truly, Satan is threatened by every communication of zeal towards your destiny. I know what cares Satan. I found out early in life. The moment you say, I am taking a step, I tell you, Satan fears you. It's not everybody Satan is afraid of. There are men who have determined when you worship God and you say, Lord, in life and in death, Satan says, what do I do with this person? Whether you pray or not, things are working well. I guarantee you it's because somebody somewhere is praying for you. A day will come, God will wake and say, Mr. Man, there are still other sinners getting born again. Your tenure of, of cheap playing Christianity has been expired. I say, it, it doesn't really matter. Oh God, I thank you. I love you. You are my king. You died. You've done everything. You will, you will waste like a chicken. Especially, take what I'm saying serious. I'm not playing games. There is the gate of hell. It will meet you on the road to your job. 
it will meet you when you are about to give birth one of our ladies just put to bed Annie worshipped him bouncing baby boy hallelujah at a point they were talking stories here and there and she said she had a dream and she saw me I thank God for using my face as a communication of victory and seriousness in the spirit no I say it with, with all humor. if you see me in your dream before please hear what I'm saying before you carry newspaper around and say you are, you are programming all of that let me tell you some of you are not serious with your destiny even you you know you are not serious that's why the gate of hell will pass you you say what of me they say no 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 you are not an issue there is somebody we are looking for listen may your life not be so cold that the gate of hell ignores you you would think it's spiritual growth but it's a sign of being so inert in the spirit you are not striking any chord when the devil wants to destroy your parents he comes freely no resistance whatsoever you snore in demons come in do what they do and they and they, they come out and you wake up i refuse my life to be like that for as long as i am alive the devil will know that i love the lord and i will stake my life to see his kingdom come are you getting what i'm saying do you know there are some of you is the covering of your prayer that is keeping your family make no mistakes about it they are criticizing you and you don't know why it's a reaction don't stop that's the time to stay after they do all of that you find a corner you know how kings reign come on you know how they reign you don't stand outside behaving like a fool you lock yourself fire is rising everywhere in the spirit and the gates of hell are saying here he comes again may they know your name he said Jesus I know Paul I know Joshua Selman I know they will know you and know your tongues once they hear it they say here he comes Shekete katababa, manta protokaya, tongues that have grown with pain, tongues that have grown with sacrifice. The gates of hell will fight anything they can fight in your life. Please be aware of it. You may be as beautiful as the sun. You will watch men pass you like this. That's when it will occur to you that the God of this world can blind people's eyes hallelujah one day in my life fridge fell on my head the devil wanted to destroy my life yet by the mercy of God I've shared with you some of don't think I'm playing games that's why if listen when the devil was doing that he saw the word I'm giving you it, it's not just because of Joshua Selman. When they looked at the womb of her that was with child, they said they saw two nations, not two people. There are some of you, the, the arsenals of hell rising against you doesn't even have anything to do with you as in you is what you represent. Backslide and see how the devil just leaves you. And upon this rock, I will build my church. If you travel up and down and come back safe, it's not luck. There is a law of life. If you don't know it, you will keep being afraid for the rest of your life. Tomorrow we are going to a bomber show. Praise the Lord. To go and invade and set fire. It's fire all the way, brothers and sisters. Mm. So break every chain. Break every chain. May your appearance be the threat of hell in any territory. That when you show up, come on. Look, there are some of you. The reason why God will insist that you marry somebody is because he's taking himself to that family. He packaged himself to you. And he's saying, go there. And you enter that family. And you just discern the spiritual atmosphere and see chains that have kept people and say for introduction welcome note there are 
lift up your heads all ye gates that's introduction but why has your life not passed this kind of threat to the gates of hell hallelujah Moses threatened the devil when he died Satan took his body his dead body they were fighting over his dead body Satan said he's dead I still want it because if he resurrects I, I rather carry it and keep it and make sure nothing happens the dead body of a man Elisha died and his dead body still brought somebody back to life but the beautiful part is that Luke 10 19 he said behold see I have given you whether you know how to access it or not is not the issue but I have given you he said behold when the Bible tells you behold it means see conceive what I'm saying as a reality in your spirit it's not just open your eyes and see you are already seeing you are not blind behold man takatayabada I give you I give I confer upon you power to tread upon serpents scorpions and over how many all the powers of the enemy the word power there is the word exousia authority i give it to you joshua selman because you will need it you will never be able to advance koinonia without that power there are gates that will rise there are gates over Zaria. don't think this crowd gathering outside is just because satan was asleep there is a force we know where we do it when the prayer band comes together on tuesday as they lift their voice something is happening and while you are there in your room some chains just break and you say let me go for koinonia today and something wants to keep you but god will say come 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 listen please let me submit to you in all sincerity if your prayer life is dead use this meeting to jack it back to life i'm not playing games this is not an issue of i'm calling to the ministry of prayer nobody is called into any ministry of prayer i say everybody is called into the ministry that will make jesus come the advancement of the kingdom he didn't tell some let me teach you how to pray the rest go fishing he was talking to everybody you see the importance of prayer if you are not told this let me tell you what i'm doing to you is imparting the spirit of prayer and supplication if i don't give you a reason to pray you will never pray all these lazy things people do around and let me tell you something a big secret see explore the mystery of night prayers we'll, we'll soon do when there is a series on that The mystery of night prayers when all the noise and all the things that, that stop unnecessary angelic activities because of disobedience those people are asleep and you are praying you are just worshiping putting worship like this that's why it's good to be rich create a prayer garden in your house put flowers put the portrait of Jesus remove every nonsense that Nigeria has put in your head and you put it and you wake up in the night you carry your notebook where you are trusting God for direction for the next level you carry your Bible you carry your recorder this is what I do this is what I do I put heavy worship for hours and while that is happening I'm lying down flat with notebooks Oh Lord, this land is opening up. God said, don't go anywhere. Stay in one place. Say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I would have made a fool out of myself. And God says, I want to do more, son. You are limiting me. You are limiting me. Expand your capacity. Thank God for what you have seen in Koinonia, but it's only little. And I say, Lord, supply the grace. And that heavy Shekinah comes. I lie down there. I sleep and I wake up. I sleep and I wake up. The body is tired. I say, sleep there. You are not going anywhere. Not what you do on your bed. You lie down, then you put your phone and you sleep off. That is, is a basic level of spiritual growth. 
is spiritual growth that is a reflection of laziness. You don't write your exams on your bed and say, bring my exam paper. No matter what the rain is, you get up. Please, are you getting blessed? I'm trying to impart some level of seriousness in us. Because this is how the great will reign. The gates of hell. Everybody say, I have authority. When I read this scripture years ago, it made me afraid. There are two words in this whole thing that makes me fear God. Not behold, not power, not all. By any means or any means. What does by any means mean to you? Is the part of scripture you understand that will open up. When the Bible says nothing shall by any means. It's a double confirmation. So in case anything happens and I didn't pray. Satan will still not use it as a yardstick. Because the revelation of by any means is at work in my life. By any means. Whether by means of my ignorance or carelessness. That scripture still fortifies me. While God is trying to restore me. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you only believe in the power, that's what you see. If you believe the by any means part, that's why some of you were almost sleeping with one lady one day. You two, you don't know what happened. Right? Never brought light or something. That's the power of God working. Don't, don't just laugh. Come on. You know I will talk to you. Right? Or you were planning to go somewhere and rain fell without cloud by any means. Keeping you. I want you to realize that you truly have authority now whether you have received it is one thing for me to give you this it's another thing for you to receive it and it is yet another thing to know how to use it are you getting me whether or not you refuse it, it does not mean I did not give you he said I give you authority let's hurry up the second limitation that the Bible lets us see is the limitation that is caused by lack of a transformed and an aligned mind I want to dwell on this a little and then we'll pray the first limitation is the gates of hell Satan but the second and even bigger limitation is lack of a transformed mind the absence of a transformed mind can be a limitation to the might and the glory of God finding expression. Now, let me explain something very quickly. I want to just correct something very, very quickly. Please look up. I taught something and we're having a school of ministry and I did a little teaching and I saw the way the students, the thing was just nailing them and uh, God, they were saying, it's not like I don't agree with you, but let it just settle down. What we call the tripartite nature of man. I want to teach you something. Please look up. People have written books who have never had any encounter with God and have written all kinds of audacious books. Let me have three people. I want to correct something now, please. Hallelujah. Watch this. Just stand face. Me. You stand in the middle. You are wearing white. God bless you. Watch this. Look at this. This is what you have been taught. Now, I'm not against what we call the tripartite nature of man. But I want to teach you something that will really liberate you. Otherwise, you will not understand this transformation thing I'm talking about. What I'm going to teach is very powerful now. This is what we have taught people. This is man number one, spirit. This is man, same man number two, soul. Is that not true? This is man number three, body. This is what you have taught. The Bible never teaches this one. This is nonsense. That's religion that brought up that. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? It is true that man is a tripartite being. But the concept of tripartite being is not three distinct individuals. Like Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Uh -uh. It's in the similitude of that. But watch this. This is the part I want to explain to you. What is the soul of man? Look up. If you don't understand this, forget transformation. Forget carrying the power of God and the glory of God. What exactly is the soul of man? It is true that the Bible says that you'll be kept spirit, soul, and body. Right? But what is the soul of man? 
is what I'm saying is, can you separate the spirit of man to say, this is spirit. You, this is soul. Stand here. This is body. Can that happen? Look at me. When a man dies, how many objects or entities are separate? Two. Is that not true? Whatever you call it, whether spirit or soul, we're about to find out. But whatever, let's call it X. X comes out and the body is lying down there. Correct? Is that true? We're about to get the name of X now. Listen. <laughs> you say why? No, you say why? There's no why in the equation. Are you, are you following what I'm saying now? If you don't understand this, you will be confused. Which part relates to God? Which part should change? Which part goes to heaven? And there is, that's to tell you believers are not even growing. Because if you are growing, you must meet this question on the way. Are you getting what I'm saying? What is the soul? Look up. We teach that man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. Very correct. It's only that we don't think over what we are saying. Joshua Selman. Listen. Joshua Selman is a person. He has a handkerchief. He lives in a room. How many? Assuming this room is a living thing. How many living things do we have? Are you getting what I'm saying now? What you call the soul. Please get this. Never forget what I'm about to teach you now. What you call the soul, listen, is the spirit of man, but connected to his will, emotions, and intellect. The will, emotion, and, and intellect of man are forces or spiritual frameworks that were attached to his spirit man to be able to help that spirit relate with the body. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when the Bible says man is a spirit, it is true in that he's describing the fact that this spirit entity came from God, right? But the spirit like that, if the spirit just comes to the body, there will still not be interaction because of law of territory. Go and get my message, mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught on the law of territory that there must be compatibility in territories. That's why spirits cannot move freely in the earth. They need material bodies. Is that true? Because of the law of territory. So the spirit as it were. Is unable to find expression physical in the body. Until a dividing line. Are you getting what I'm saying now? An attachment. That helps the spirit. To communicate with this container called the body. And that attachment. Is the mind. Composed of your will ability to make decisions so the spirit wills and through the will of man the body executes that will are you getting what i'm saying emotions and then intellect a sense of comprehension so this body can wake up as an intelligent person with a brain remove the will emotion and the intellect and you don't have a soul again you just have spirit and body are you getting what i'm saying so when you say man is a soul you are right when you say man is a spirit you are right but i'm telling you the dynamics of the difference because when you get born again this guy watch this when you get born again in in his original sense your spirit man is united with christ it experiences the fullness of salvation immediately immediately oneness so way are you getting my point the so way life implanted here but that zoe life has not found expression in this body that zoe life has not permeated these faculties that was given to you that is why although you are born again you find out that you may still have that appetite to smoke the memory of what you did is still there because this dividing line the will emotion and intellect has not been transformed are you getting what i'm saying so the Bible puts it this way. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 9. You need to understand this. Habalists understand this. Those who do astral travel. Right? What they call them. Harry Krishna or all this world religion. They understand this very well. It's part of the foundational teachings that they are taught. Everybody read. Want to read. The word end there is the culmination of your faith. 
receiving the culmination of your faith what is it this is talking to believers what is the salvation of your soul the salvation of your soul is when your will your emotions and your intellect progressively begin to experience the fullness of the reality of what has happened in your spirit the degree to which that salvation happens is the degree to which your body begins to respond more perfectly to the impulses of the spirit which is connected with God are you understanding what I'm saying so watch this all authority has been given so we believe the word of God that means this spirit man is carrying the very authority of Jesus that means that if the mind of Christ is automatically attached to your spirit experientially nothing will be impossible for you again because there is no resistance as far as your soul realm is concerned are you getting what I'm saying are we following what I'm saying but this is usually the problem watch this all power is here the body is a puppet is ready to execute anything that these channels give it room to are you getting what I'm saying now this is all the power of God but this is the level of access so that power can barely find expression to the body so all that the body executes are you getting what I'm saying is just a little and a fraction of the capacity of what is resident there but because human beings look at the body and so promise now teaches because he used his eyes to read oh sick bodies you can be healed blind you will be healed and your spirit man is saying yes we have the power don't fear but because you do not have that vision of your soul the transformation what makes the earthly heavenly are you getting my message now that very factor i now come to him on wheelchair is it true that all authority has been given yes and i say stand up and he can't stand up he sits back down i say look ginger your feet let's try it again watch this stand up and nothing happens and at the end of it this guy says your jesus is a liar what happened he was misrepresented you just misrepresented jesus christ because what you read and what happened conflicted themselves do you agree with me now i am telling you that god is in his throne at the mercy of your transformation as mighty as he is on the throne he's at the mercy give me space and then while you are struggling a man like benny him comes and he just stands and says holy if you are in a wheelchair stand up stand up and he stands up and he's walking what happened more jesus than you no no there is a greater conformity to the image of the christ that has made him his body now responds in greater measure are you getting what i'm saying so it is this middle man that is your next project the moment you get born again your job is to bring that mind that contains your will emotion and intellect that makes your spirit called a soul right so when we say salvation of the soul you're not really doing anything per se although we generally say spirit man are you getting my point but what we really mean i'm breaking the dynamics for you is that attachment to your spirit man call your will emotion and intellect that is the doorway through which the reality and the glory of god find expression because he that is joined to christ is one spirit your spirit man has been joined to christ except you don't believe the bible but that christ cannot show up on the scene because your mind is a limitation so i come as a preacher and i say in the name of jesus darkness flee and although the spirit is willing but the flesh becomes weak because the doorway through which the possibilities of god through the spirit will find expression in the body is also weak so i look at somebody oppressed and i say in the name of jesus christ be free and nothing happens when nothing happens over a long time the devil now comes and says why don't you try me you have tried the rest jesus being part of the rest and you say truly let's go to the village we have tried man of god i appreciate you 
I know God is using you mightily, but the emergency requires another force to come into attention. And the herbalist that you meet has mastered the art of yielding his faculties. See, this is the same thing that happens when demons come. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Let me teach you something now, watch this. A man who is not born again can have demons attach themselves the same way the Holy Spirit seeks to attach himself. That's called demon possession. Are you getting me? The will is helplessly at the mercy of that so the man can carry out anything. This man can be born again. Demons can no longer come to his spirit man per se but they use the doorways of these faculties. So between the spirit and the body there is an interruption. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So he can be born again yet anger is still killing him. He can be a man of God yet he's still masturbating and he's praying in tongues. Genuine tongues. Real tongues. And you are saying, Kai, this man of God is fake. No, he's not fake. Something is happening in the soul realm. The salvation of his soul has not been perfected. So the Bible says it this way. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal because it's not the realm of the flesh but mighty through God. Are you seeing now? He shows you how that transformation happens to the pulling down of strongholds casting every imagination every high thing that dwells in that soul realm and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ listen so the difference between me and many of us is not necessarily more anointing as we call it the difference is more alignment more yieldedness more translation so it makes you reflect the heavenly this is what happened to Enoch. Enoch yielded himself in a point that in his lifetime, this, his mind was so yielded and this body started experiencing immortality. You see the concept of immortality that many preachers, people like Kobus, great man I love and honor, he's gone to be with the Lord. He caught the revelation of immortality but not the dynamics of its manifestation. So he knew from the word of God that if immortality is at work in your life, the first thing that happens is you stop aging. At once, you stop aging. That's a sign that immortality is at work. But it so happens that immortality is not an impartation. The fullness of that which is in your spirit seeks to find expression in your body. And our yieldedness is so slow that our lifetime cannot contain that degree of transformation. So God just takes your spirit and your body lies. The moment the trumpet shows up, the law of immortality is what will make your body. That's the law of resurrection. That's what makes a seed to arise again. Are we getting blessed? Bless you guys. I just hope you understood what I said. Psalm 78 verse 41. Please let's rush. Help us Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah! They turned back and tempted God. And what else did they do? They what? They limited the Holy One. Who are the day? Mortal men. God wanted to step in. Oh Israel. I want to do mighty things in your midst. But the Bible says they limited God. They limited God. A man can limit God. Brothers and sisters. How many times have we limited God in our lives? How many times have we limited God in our finances? How many times have we limited God in our ministries? Who told you the dead cannot rise? Who told you all these things cannot happen? There is something stopping the realities that have been deposited in the spirit man. And so every time we engage, I'll be sharing with us the forces that will help us attain to this transformation. Listen, I will never forget the first day that I was going to experience the anointing of the spirit in my life. I've never seen it before. Never laid hands on anybody. I just kept praying and doing all the things that I knew to do. And one day, 
there was a lady who came from somewhere and I prayed you know we bought food for her and then she I prayed for her she got born again and I was about to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit just by faith and I just laid my hands and it was as if I was dreaming I just saw somebody moving back I had barely touched her and that's how she just went on the floor ah. I said oh God what, what is this good news that I'm seeing so be excited when you begin to see don't just be childish about it that's because some of you once you see that you keep looking for people whose <laughs> surface area to volume ratio is small so that the anointing will enter fast you now go and look for small small ladies and try to throw them i remember years ago there was a gentleman okay the power of god will touch you now now and the lady is just doing like this but refusing to fall then you put one finger you not fall two fingers you are doing madness the agenda of God is bigger than that thing. God will just let you because at least you are cooperating with him. So just do and let's continue. But it doesn't mean God, you are slowing down your progress. Some of you are doing it, Abi. Praise the Lord. And so from that time, I began to see, I will never forget when I saw one dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit in my life. I think it was our first crusade, Pangshin crusade. We usually have pastor's conference where we have some time with the pastors, teach them. That was in 2006. And then we'll have like, um, we'll just distribute ourselves in different churches and go and worship with them. So I was in a church and I gave a word of knowledge. When I gave a word of knowledge, the person literally stood up by the anointing. You know this running that people run out and come. Brrr, I was shocked. I thought that's how they do it in the church. I called another person and he ran out. I could not understand. I didn't know that gradually 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 hallelujah let me use medical terms have you seen times when medical people a woman wants to give birth right and they said that her pelvic area has not dilated enough is that true is there a baby yes does he want to come out yes why is he not coming out the mother right and sometimes they have to do all kinds of things Wars come to wars when nothing is wrong. They just tear her open and carry that child because the child must come out. Pray that God will not have to do CS for you for this destiny thing to come out by force. As soon as Zion travails, the Bible uses that simile too. She will put forth a child. So, the reason why God is able to do what he's doing now in a larger capacity is that by grace and by constant partnership with the Spirit over the years, we have been able to open a little more so the transformation that has our mindset has been able to come in greater alignment with the word of god so more of heaven can find expression to our lives but compared to where god wants to take we are still so slow this is why we must continue contending are you getting what i'm saying now that is the reason why we celebrate men of god we don't just celebrate the men we celebrate their sacrifice of giving God space to find expression. That's why a man can enter a city and that city will shake. Not just shake in terms of crowd. A lot of even people who will not come for the crusade. There's a woman. I think one of the few women on earth that I know is alive. That carries the presence of God in the order of Ketri. She's still alive till today. When that woman is coming for a crusade immediately they spot her car that's how healings and deliverance happen i was shocked i didn't know there's such a person in the earth ah the day i saw that i said my goodness ah this is heaven this is what we're saying this woman stepped into the crusade ground and my goodness the kind of miracles i'm not talking of all these miracles that you don't even know whether you are healed or not you are just afraid of the pastor so you say yes provable miracle wounds that will close right away not magic right away wounds closing i said my goodness oh god so you still have men and women and ladies do you know you have an advantage over men because of your configuration your configuration was designed in the similitude of the holy spirit you see that that's why many ladies are easily possessed and demonized because their configuration is in the similitude of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Let's write a few things. 
A transformed mind, I'm defining it now. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible calls the mind of Christ. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. I'm defining it now. It is the mind that has come into agreement. It is the mind that has come into agreement and alignment with the word of God. Come into agreement and alignment with the word of God. Come out and has willfully submitted to the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's a transformed mind. So a will, emotion and intellect that has come into agreement. You no longer conflict the principles of God. An alignment and a mind or mindset that has submitted to the full influence of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Bible calls the end of your faith. The culmination of the work of salvation. And this very one, transformation is not initial. It's not automatic. It's not at once. It's progressive. It takes a while. It is over that that the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. It says, walk out your salvation. You see it now. That's the part it says, walk out. Not just the work of the law. Not just trying to add something to what Jesus has done. No. Walk it out. The walk out there. It says, wherefore my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, comma, walk out your what? Your own salvation. As a matter of urgency, what is the work there? Is the name given to your participation, your cooperation with the Holy Spirit. In your fasting, you are working it out. I'll be sharing with us. In your prayer and all the points I'm about to give you here, you are working it out. Romans chapter 13 verse 14. The Bible gives it an interesting picture. It says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Wear is like a cloth. Put on. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And what? By so doing, make no provision for the flesh. That means there will be space for the flesh until you put on. That put on, the transformation is like wearing a new garment. Your possibilities in life through God is defined by your degree of submission in the soul realm to the power and the glory and the might of God. Hallelujah. You see why we love and honor the Holy Spirit? Write this very quickly. The degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man the degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access the degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access to the glory and the power of God in and through his life that means your degree of alignment to God is the exact measure of how much of the power of God will manifest in your life not how much you carry but how much will find expression so you can carry God as we all believe but you never see that God show up in your life in my life Lord be glorified will you be glorified in my life Lord be glorified today can you sing that song Lord in my life he my life be glorified
glorified. Be glorified. Hallelujah. So what is your own part of the deal as far as your, your transformation is concerned? Remember the purpose of your transformation is to give God space in the earth through your life. That God will find expression through you. That God will find expression through your church, man of God. There is so much God can do with that ministry. Woman of God, there is so much God can do in you. But your disalignment has made him look small. I have made you too small in my mind. Ah, how true. Oh Lord, we really should cry for forgiveness. Forgive me. And I have believed in a lie that you are unable to help me. But today, right in this place. But now, oh Lord. I see my wrong Heal my heart And show yourself strong Show yourself in my life And in my heart And with my song Oh Lord Be mad Oh that's the song you must sing That's the song of transformation Be magnified Break the walls Break the boundaries Be magnified Oh Lord Be magnified Oh Lord You are highly exalted And there is nothing You can't Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. St. Patrick's, a great man that lived, a man had died, brothers and sisters, six months. He was dead and St. Patrick's came and said where is the grave? True story. When they showed the grave, he signed his signature on it. St. Patrick. He said, Diggy, they brought the man out alive. In this earth, men whose mindsets have authorized heaven to make them gods. I shared with you about ancient, I study a lot about revivals. I was sharing with you about the monk that they were building a cathedral and a wood stopped halfway. There was no money to buy another one. He held it and drew it and completed it. Aye. Transformation that makes the earthly to become the heavenly. Catherine Kuhlman, she was so transformed to a point that she was preaching on a pulpit and she left the stage but she was still floating. She didn't realize she had left the stage. Apostle Babalola, for those of you who know, the founder of CAC, that man preached to a point he was levitating and going. They held him and brought him back. E.W. Kenyon, men who allowed the possibilities of God. You don't die less than 70 in his church. He will raise you back to life. One time a man had a, a, an accident. A car climbed his legs broke his bones and all E.W. Kenyon did was to look at him because he sees through his eyes and he looked at him allowing heaven to pass through your eyes and the bones started making noise we say it today like mystics but men the Bible says men whom the earth is not worthy of how did they live imagine brothers and sisters Elijah he was talking with God on the mountain and they came to interrupt him. He called fire. Your atmosphere opened. Fire came, consumed them and they went back physically. Daniel, 
entered the lion's den and looked at the lions and smiled. Joshua told the son to stand still. There is something we are missing in our generation. And Bill Johnson got it on the spot. He called it the supernatural power of a transformed mind. How that heaven wants to find expression. Do you know how much God can do with koinonia? But in my little mind, imagine how much I limit him. And God says, well, I will just manage with the little space. And see the little things that trickles of his presence that happen during miracle service. And some of you are clapping and God is saying, I wish. I wish. That's the reason why God transports men from region to region. He's transporting himself through them. Tomorrow we are going to a bomber shop. And God is going there through the decree we have given him. He expects to do great things, but he wants to do more. Unfortunately, Joshua Selman has refused to be as yielded as God wants. So probably there is somebody in a mortuary that is not supposed to die, but I may not be able to raise him. And I will go there and when they finish, people will come with seeds and offering and say, you are a powerful man. And then our arrogance will further prove our mediocrity. Because there is no passion to press again. Don't compare yourself with what is happening around in our generation. You'll be a weak Christian. Compare yourself with men who live like gods on the earth. They threw Paul. Took him out of the city and killed him. When they killed him, they went. The other apostles came. Yeah, Paul, this is how you have done. Just shook himself. He said, guys, please, I will talk to you later on. Paul said... I am in the straight between. I'm standing. The line dividing the realm of the spirit and the physical realm. That's where I am. I'm choosing to go or to stay. But I'll stay because it's profitable for you. Can you imagine a man like that? John. His mind was so aligned. They threw him in boiling pot. And nothing happened. But today when they shoot you, you will die at once. Let me finish up so we'll pray. So what then is your assignment? What's your challenge? Write these two scriptures. Philippians 2.12 and Philippians 2.5. That's your assignment. Let this mind be in you. Permit this mind. 2 verse 5. Let this mind. Koinonia. God wants to find expression in Zaria. God wants to find expression in your family. Give him space. Don't limit the mighty one. He is mighty but limited mighty but limited mighty but limited through you what is your challenge write it that means your assignment and your task to work out that salvation to contend for transformation and alignment so as to grant more space and more access to God to find expression through you in the earth. That's your singular challenge. That's your singular task. Contend for transformation. Give God space through your life. My goal in life is that heaven will find so much expression through me. That there will be more outworkings of the kingdom unconsciously than consciously. I look forward to a time when there will be accidents and I will just come and God will say thank you. I've always wanted to raise them but I need an access point. Joshua Selman be there. Hey. See, the Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick. It didn't say you shall say be healed. Just take me near that person and he will be healed. God wants to go to your home but he wants to travel through you. Transformation. The hallmark of transformation is oneness with God. Unity. The hallmark of transformation is where your mind literally becomes the mind of Christ. Your mind becomes a full expression. Becomes a mindset that totally agrees with the word of God. Are you willing to give up that culture to take up the mind of Christ? Are you willing to give up the past to take up the mind of Christ? Give him space. Give him space. 
very quickly before we pray the process of transformation what is the dynamic so how are you changed what's what's what does it entail to move from the earthly to the heavenly number one the first key to transformation is a life of prayer the first key that translates you from the earthly to the heavenly praying in the spirit when you pray in the spirit that transformation is happening whether you know it or not that's why I encourage as many of you whose prayer lives are weak join the prayer department for one month so that you can have a platform to fire up your prayer life pray in the night pray in the day separate days for prayers prayer in the spirit is one of God's technology for changing a man from being earthly to being heavenly is one of the system through which he enlarges you and creates more space for himself prayer is like molting the way reptiles snakes molt you, see, you know what happens when they want to expand right they come out of their current shell it's a difficult process it's a sacrifice because snakes don't have hands and they have to crawl through and when they come out you now see the cocoon and the snake is big before it now crystallizes that's how you grow so while you are praying investments of prayer one hour two hours three hours sometimes you just dedicate the time morning till night worship and you just pray with fastings of course periodically not every time and something is happening to you all of a sudden you find out that heaven can find expression more you would not know until you go for one meeting and while you're standing you're seeing people shouting everywhere and you are seeing the power of God moving and you are surprised what has happened to me space 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 you've given him space prayer is principally a channel for encounter illumination and empowerment not just petition petition is the last aspect of prayer the primary purpose of prayer is for encounters for illumination first corinthians let me give you a few scriptures quickly first corinthians chapter 14 i won't explain just write it chapter 2 verse 4 the bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but to god right he speaks mysteries and then verse 4 of 1st Corinthians 14 says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies builds up enlarges his spiritual capacity number two Romans chapter 8 from verse 26 and 27 the Bible says for we know not what to pray for as we ought to it says but the spirit he makes intercession for us he searches the mind of God right he brings an intermingling it's like a salt covenant he says let us reason together it happens in the place of prayer romans 8 26 and 27 and then jeremiah 33 verse 3 prayer grants you access to light and illumination call on to me and i will answer and show the great and mighty things not small and meager things great and mighty things let me tell you look at me there is no amount of bible study that will substitute for prayer do you know why many people are not really getting revelation because what we are doing is study alone and not prayer you can study but it is prayer that will break that scripture like a shell and release the life to you make no mistakes about it you can sit down study forever get up and carry the letter that kills go and teach and not bless people but true illumination is in the place of prayer and when you add prayer with fasting it's like a time bomb he said then shall your light break forth like the morning and your health shall spring speedily is this not the fast that i've commanded that means there is a type you can do on your own hunger strike right religious fast 
but there is a type I have commanded and if you do that your light will break forth like the morning and your health will come speedily James chapter 5 verse 16 the fervent not joking and trivial prayer the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much Amplified says is dynamic in its working. So when you pray, when you pray in the spirit, you are enlarging your capacity. You see why we pray. You see why we believe in the ministry of prayer. It's not the works of the Lord to pray and fast. We are not trying to add to what Jesus has done. We are opening up to receive all that he has brought. Number two. The second process of transformation happens through insight and revelation from the word. So here we have the ministry of prayer and then insight and revelation from the word. Notice I didn't just say the word of God. It's for a reason. Because if I say the word of God, many of us have been reading Bible. But the insight and the revelation, the illumination you get from the word of God. And then in addition to that, our obedience to the word of God is what releases the power of what we believe to produce results for us. Listen, listen. The word of God is like a bag that carries treasures. Your obedience to the principles of the word opens up the bags and releases the treasure inside. You know how granite is? It's in a shell. That's principally how the word of God is. When you act, your obedience releases what is inside so that it will work for you. So it's not enough to just get insight and revelation. You must be willing to obey to the latter. I wrote something here that is interesting. Revelation without the willingness to obey is a demonstration of rebellion. Revelation. When you have revelation, insight in the Bible, and you do not have the willingness to obey it, you have clearly demonstrated your rebellion. A few scriptures. Mm. Proverbs 24 verse 30. Let's look at it very quickly. We'll look at three scriptures. Proverbs 24 verse 30. And then Acts chapter 8, 29 to 30. Proverbs 24 verse 30. Hallelujah. It says. 24 verse what? 30. I think I may have made a mistake. Okay, let's go to Acts 8 verse 29 to 30. While I look that up. Acts 8. It was a story. The story of the utopian Enoch. Watch this. That guy could not experience God in his life because he was void of knowledge and understanding. And when the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join yourself to the chariot 30. And Philip ran Peter to him and had him read prophet Isaiah and said what? Understandest what thou readest? Not just that you are reading it. Do you understand? It's not enough to just know scriptures and cram scriptures. Do you understand? Understanding, illumination, insight. Job chapter 22 verse 22 very powerfully job 22 22 receive i pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart receive it don't just read it receive it let light enter you the entrance of thy word give it light there is an enlargement he said write prosperously because of truth The last scripture, John chapter 1 verse 12. This is the one that blew my mind. The Bible says, As many as received him. Who is the him? The word. But as many, not everybody will receive the word. Many will read the word. Many will admire the word. But very few will receive it. He said, but as many as received that word. That word gives them power to become. Power to become power to become 
when you receive the word it gives you power to become what it says not when you read it when you receive it and diligently obey the principles it transforms you to become so the word about titan guarantees your financial future when you receive it you receive it by acting upon it and satisfying the conditions that release the anointing that backs it then it begins to change you from the earthly to the heavenly number three the last thing to do in the process of transformation is worship a life of intense worship intense worship bible says do not be drunk with wine wearing in excess he said but be filled with the holy ghost speaking to yourself in psalms hymns spiritual songs and making melody in your heart to the lord let me tell you something about worship i've studied it very well worship brings the manifest presence of god to your life and your territory worship is a magnet there are three levels of god's presence there is his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere at the same time there is what i call his emmanuel dimension that when two people are gathered in a place he's there in their midst god with us but there is his shekinah his manifested presence that dimension is invoked in worship second chronicles chapter 5 verse 12 to 14 let's hurry up second chronicles 5 12 to 14 second chronicles 5 it says and also the levites which were singers all of them of asaph of Haman, of Jedutun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and pastries and psalms, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests, worshipping and sounding trumpets. Next verse. And it came to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praise the lord saying for the lord is good for his mercy endured forever that what happened the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the lord next verse the shekinah of god came and rested there so that the priests could not minister by reason of the cloud he said for the glory of the lord had filled the house when you maintain a life of intense worship the glory of god comes your body begins to shake a literal vibration at his presence and you are lying down there soaking in that presence for hours see this is how to walk powerfully in the anointing and the glory of god that the cloud the glory of the Lord let me tell you when the glory of the Lord rests upon your life you won't even be able to stand up that Shekinah sicknesses will melt away infirmities will go away the majestic voice of God will come through the cloud and speak to you maintain a life of worship put worship songs in your phones remove all those ungodly songs that keep making your mindset a doorway for demonic activities come and meet the worship team let them do a selection of soaking worship songs for you just lie down in your room you may be sleeping normally but let the songs just play sometimes they may just be hymns like this or songs playing no words to them and you are just soaking and after a while the shekinah of god like a hand resting upon eggs remember what i said about the hand a hand will rest upon an egg and turn that liquid substance to a cheek how much more the glory of god when it rests upon you hallelujah acts chapter 16 verse 25 the bible tells us that paul and silas were locked up in the prison and the bible says they prayed and they sang they sang praises to god and the prisoners had them he had them oh my god that's why we worship a lot in koinonia it's the secret of the presence 
it's a secret look at every man that walks in the anointing every man that walks in the miraculous Benny Hinn will worship for hours Dr. Paul Enche would worship for hours men who know God men who carry the anointing Catherine Kuhlman all these great people they would sing hymns and worship for hours and when the presence rests wheelchairs will be lifted just by themselves your job is to get God to the scene and step out our worship team all of them have been trained to understand the assignment of koinonia worship team is not to entertain koinonia the very assignment of koinonia worship team is to create the atmosphere where the presence of god finds expression that's why sometimes they can come and just raise one popular song and just create the atmosphere you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Sing it one more time. You are good. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are good and your mercy forever. Hallelujah. Let's sing it one more time. try to listen to my message and voice of his presence is the foundation for this we're going to pray we're out of time rise up on your feet just two prayer points but i want you to pray with all your heart i like you to pray and ask the lord and say lord bring me to that place where the mind of christ experientially becomes my mind I'm willing to give you space go ahead and pray I'm willing to give the God of miracles space the God of breakthroughs the God of signs and wonders the God of impartations the God of salvation and revival Pray, man of God. Pray, woman of God. Pray, businessman. Give God space. Hallelujah. Pair yourselves into two, please. You are going to pray. I like you to intercede intensely for your neighbor lord let heaven invade his life pray let heaven invade his mindset let heaven invade his ministry let heaven invade his business let heaven invade his marriage outside make sure you are praying outside make sure you are praying Heaven, heaven, invade our minds, invade our souls, invade our 
our souls invade our bodies let the fullness of the capacity the fullness of the possibilities in God find expression hallelujah hallelujah look up you're going to pray for yourself and say Lord in any way I have misrepresented you by refusing to give you space I make up my mind that I will contend for transformation that healing anointing must come out in my life after the order of Benny Hinn, after the order of Ketrin Kuman that prophetic mantle must find expression I refuse to be a weak Christian I refuse to be a weak man of God that apostolic anointing will find expression after the order of Paul after the order of Smith Wigglesworth after the order of St. Patrick my territory will experience revival revival fire 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 revival fire healing fire no playing games no playing games with destiny no playing games shake it, 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 it. the sick must be healed through my life the oppressed must be delivered sinners must be saved sinners must be saved the church must be equipped through my life I give you space my family must receive breakthrough hallelujah hallelujah we're out of time but just permit me to raise one more prayer point look at me look at me there are two limitations to your being transformed the first the gates of hell the solution to that is have an understanding of your authority and exercise it the second is the limitation that your mind gives you the solution content for transformation in prayer and in the word we are going to pray there are forces that have vowed that you will never rise up to give God that level of space there are all kinds of forces but I like you to exercise dominion over yourself and your loved ones you love them some of them don't know what you know lift your voice and cry in the next three minutes please permit me to raise one more prayer point I know we're out of time but this is burning in my spirit look up hallelujah God is doing things fire is burning in this place listen Bishop Oyedeko said there was a time the church in Kaduna was not growing nothing was happening they had the heart they had the mandate but they were spiritual walls and they were fasting together with the pastors lord what is it and the lord told him come out and he came out and he said look 
and he looked upon the church and he saw a dark cloud he said this is the cloud that is misinterpreting your ministry there are people who are genuine but the perception of others about you and your ministry is either that you are fake or you are controversial there are spirits that make it so so people will not come to receive so people will not come to be blessed there are some of you the helpers of your destiny have been manipulated whenever they want to come to your life something drives them who am i speaking to lift your voice like a priest and challenge gates challenge gates Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Forces of ancestry. Forces of darkness. Lift up your heads. Forces of delay. Lift up your single head. Forces of stagnation. Lift up your heads. Forces of lukewarmness. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your heads. Pray. Begin to command. Decree. Command. Decree. Command. Release my marriage. Release my job. Release my academics. Release my destiny. Release my ministry. Release my mantle. Release my anointing. Release my destiny helpers. Release my unction. Shokote. Skata. Mapate. Toprotokete. Ekatatata. Ekete. Sakros. Ekete. Sekete. We set fire, fire on altars of darkness. We set fire on yokes. We set fire on devils. We command by the fire of the word, by the fire of the blood, by the fire of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how you rescue your ministry. That's how you rescue your marriage. That's how those chains will be caught. They won't be caught by joking and playing games. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. When you confront the gates, then they will open. When you confront the gates that are killing your ministry, then it will open. When you confront the gates stopping your marriage, then it will open. You confront the gates killing your academic, then it will open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to stop. We're out of time. Listen. I want you to take this revelation. God is not limited. We have limited him. And the spirit cries. The spirit cries. If any man will give me space. He said go and borrow vessels. The problem is not the oil. But the container carrying it. If you enlarge the container, the oil will increase. Shut up. Hallelujah. I pray for a restoration of every dead prayer life. Every spiritual lukewarmness that has authorized Satan to make a chicken out of your life. I empower you tonight with strength from above. In the name of Jesus, every zeal and fire for God that has died for whatever reason, may it jump back to life today. 
hallelujah now quickly keep standing everybody our time is fast spent but there are people inside and outside the lord brought you and you know that you have not made your ways right with the lord you love god but you know you are tired you are saying man of god i'm tired of the way my life is and i'm crying for help you've never given your heart to the lord or you gave your life to christ but for some reasons you found yourself moving in one way or the other please make your way inside and outside we have one minute for this i like you to rush out and come before god come this is a place of empowerment welcome home don't be ashamed don't wait for anybody i know there are many people outside make your way inside run to jesus the place of empowerment the encounter that will change your story please take god seriously tonight don't play games with your destiny jesus wants to invade your life hallelujah keep coming for those who are here listen i salute you and i congratulate you there is no room for lukewarmness in this christian race and let me tell you no matter where you are don't feel guilty you can take off from there god is willing to reach down to you and start with you everybody started from somewhere therefore i want you to lift your right hand please you are not reciting a poem i want this to be from the depth of your heart say after me lord jesus i've heard your word and i mean business with you from this night forgive me my sins cleanse me